And for Azure Eagles, it's going to be Elis, Mordekaiser, and Rek'Sai. And it seems like Ateneo wants to pick this Kog'Maw pick again. Uh, it was successful for them last game. So if they manage to be able to pick this and have the Juggermaw comp scale into the late game, they will, will have a similar result as last game. So I think Azure Eagles thought that it worked once, let's make it work again. So they're not going to go for like reckless mistakes like last games. So they're really picking up a decent comp that actually worked in game three. While Verdis Arcus picks Braum, Gangplank, and Azir. So I think that will be for Fiery Warrior in the mid lane. Yeah, and I think this Braum pick is going to be really good, especially once if Kog'Maw gets really strong, uh, Braum can end up blocking a lot of these auto attacks in, uh, against their priority targets and be able to negate uh, Kog'Maw's potential strength in the late game. I think the difference here is Verdus Arcus has a much stronger early game than they did last game. Now they have Azir, which is not only great in late game, he's great in almost every stage. And he has, now they have Gangplank 2, who doesn't really need this. Uh, who's really strong in the late game, but also has global pressure in, in the mid game and early game with this ult. So I think the game will play out a lot differently than it did before. Veritas Arcus is not messing it around anymore. They're gonna go <laughs> for the kill. So if they're gonna commit to a game that they really wanna win, I think it shows right in their picks. And we see a hover on a Callista. I think that's Panalo's Callista, which is re he's really good at. And I think their support is Brom. That's a good combo. Kalista and Braum, you just gotta fear that CC coming from Kalista's ultimate plus Braum's ultimate. Yeah, during the interview a while ago, uh, Akosi Panalo also noted how he was more uh, engaged with ADRs that had stronger mid games and early games. So, uh, of course, he sa stated that his Kalista and his Corky was one of his most favored champions. So now we're gonna maybe see this Kalista get played. Tristan picked hovering over that Gragas. I think that's going to be a jungle Gragas. And Panalo locks in the Kalista, and that's their final lineup. So it's going to be a jungle Gragas top gangplank, mid lane Azir, and ADC Panalo. I think this is a really strong lineup coming from Veritas Arcus. Uh, Gragas is going to be a really huge front line, and Braum is going to provide that utility that. Uh, hopefully will allow them to stop the Kog'Maw from running over a lot of their carries. Uh, Azir is quite strong right now, as he is in almost every meta, but the advantage to Azir in this situation is that he has around a thousand range with his auto attack with soldiers, and he doesn't have to confront head-on uh, the Kog'Maw from, from Ateneo. Then we see a hover on the Nocturne, so that's going to be their jungle. I think we've seen what Zen did with his Nocturne, or with Zen was the jungler in yeah. the first game. So I think they're gonna go for their best picks and a top lane Hecarim. Is that going to be a mid lane Lulu again for King of Motus and support Janna? Yeah, and this Hecarim does get locked in. He's really hoping to get a lot of pressure once he gets to level six. Gragas is quite strong also in uh, jungling and. Uh, counter ganking. So we'll have to see which jungler applies a lot more pressure. Of course, we tend to see when Tenno is behind in the game, uh, AZE as a team usually gets behind. So I think they're gonna try their usual strategy of maybe try to prioritize uh, Tenno into this game and hopefully take another win. So guys, this is game four of the grand finals. What's gonna happen? Is Venus Arc is gonna win it? Get the, get the trophy for that? Or will Azure Eagles win it and go for a best of five. So I'm hoping that both teams don't have any regrets when they play the game because they're doing their best. They made it this far. So let's see how they do it. And it's going to be an intense fight because right now, if Virtus Arcus wins, that's game over for Azure Eagles. But if Azure Eagles wins, it's going to be an even score. Yeah, and they can drag it on to game five. And I want to just talk about uh, the lane matchups a little bit. How do you feel like each lane are gonna work? And do you think that there, will, will there be a possible lane swap in this situation? We're talking <laughs> about laning when there's a Gangplank. You know I'm gonna be biased, <laughs> just kidding. Okay, for the top lane, Gangplank, my favorite, uh, over at Hecarim, I think, hands down, Gangplank will have a safe farm because Gangplank doesn't need to go near creep to really last hit it, he can use his party to really far safely farm. 
while Hackerim is Rampage, he has to stack it up and get the low CD and get the job on Gangplank. In terms of fighting, I think Gangplank has a slight disadvantage. Yeah, and I think uh, in this situation, I think uh, LaSalle has a much stronger laning phase on both top lane and bot lane. So uh, they really want to match both of their lanes with the opposing lanes of the Azure Eagles. Because, for example, Callista and Braum is going to have really strong early game and they're going to have a really strong mid game as uh, opposed to Kog'Maw. So yeah. here's the video of Azure Eagles and Ateneo. Their response to their teams and how they feel about it. So let's see a video. And now Baron is live and Dragon is up in less than a minute. And oh, they were about to go and kill Ubi and they might be able to do so. Zen is such a cutie. Does go there in order to watch his teammate die. And From the beginning of the tournament all the way to the semi-finals, the Azure Eagles of Ateneo de Manila University have made themselves known as formidable adversaries to their opponents. But even if they swept their matches in the Rappler Gaming League, they seem to think that they still have a lot to prove as a team. Honestly speaking, uh, I think going into the finals we're the underdogs. Uh, I think that their bracket is much harder. Uh, any of the four teams there could have easily been the other finals c contestant. Since obviously I think we're the underdogs compared to the uh, Veritas Arcus team, I would just tell them straight up that never underestimate the heart of a champion. Their display of verb gives them a following. How the team came to be is also quite a story to tell. Fupai, I, I met him through our, uh, if I'm not mistaken, MIS 101 class. He was checking the stats of the current AZE players at that time. He was looking for, uh, for Tenno's name. For my, he was looking at my name. Unfortunately, he was behind me just looking, Ah, kilala mo ba yan? Ah, hindi. Ah, ako yan. Oh. It all started in one Theo class. Uh, Theo 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 a person I didn't know back then. He was actually my groupmate for one of the uh, final oral exams for theology, and I had no idea who he was at that time. Um, I just realized that his last name was Balisi, and the last name of the mid laner from Mineski was also Balisi. That, then that's when I started to check and found out that he was the brother. He approached me and Philip Chu to make a team for the collegiate league. You can say that they just clicked and found their places in the team. As they say, the rest is history. Now they have a shot at the championship. I think this synergy with the team, because we, we all get along so well. Like, no one's, the, no one's really the biggest voice. Like, we all have our voices. And we all agree on one thing. Of Nautilus does land, but they might be prompted to take a step back because there's a teleport coming from the Hacker with the Home Guard. Unicorn Stampede picking up two people, and this is gonna be a trade off or a turnaround. Kent is getting too much damage from the Jigs. I guess it's how much trust they put, put in each other, into each other. Like, we don't really like hold like super practices. We have the trust that we're just gonna pull it off in the end. We try to play to our um, strengths more than uh, focus on the other team's weaknesses. Because I believe that if you have a good uh, team synergy and if you just play the game well, um, you'll have a greater chance of winning compared to having to adjust to their playstyle. As their own paths converge with their traditional rivals, the De La Salle Verdes Arcos in the finals. They have something to say to their supposed seniors in the league for their match on October 10. Uh, for Rebs, first of all, pay your 200 RP. Second, um, don't worry. As I've always uh, mentioned, or as I've, I've always said in, in this interview, we'll be ready. My tip will just be don't underestimate us. Actually, wala, kasi wala naman silang pag-asa. So, okay guys, that was the video of the team, how they feel about each other, and how they became a team. So, we are now live on the Rift. We'll go there shortly. So, so we're gonna load onto the Rift. And we can see both lane, uh, both teams uh, trying to set up wards around the map. But as usual, it seems like uh, it seems like uh, LaSalle is actually the one on the invading side grouping, trying to get some picks, maybe or just some deep wards in. Unlike in the previous game where it was Ateneo that was actually able to place those deep wards and get uh, early first blood. So Tano and Zen are now ganging up on Skirtle. He gets away just in time. And we see again mid lane Lulu against Anazir. I wonder how that will work out. Like in the last game, Lulu was really 
dom dominant and showed lots of utility in the late game. But would it be the same with an Azir? Well, Azir has had a few nerfs recently, and I'm, I don't really think Lulu has uh, really hard counters against her. So it will probably just be an even lane unless uh, the jungle pressure tilts it into one person's favor. So both top laners picking up Crystal and Flask, but Hecarim did not pick any health potions, so that's going to be something. And with his Callista in the bottom lane with Fanalo, I think Tenno might have a hard time with it. Yeah, and uh, just like we were talking about a while ago, uh, it was it was uh, Callista's. Callista is one of his main ADRs, and uh, he even uh, talks about it uh, a lot. So we can actually show you an interview real right now about uh, how he likes to play Callista and a lot of these uh, ADRs that are focused on the early game. Playing Callista, I play when I have runes. I want to team fight as, as soon as possible. <laughs> so much love for Kalista. Panalo is confident in his pick, and let's see if he shows it in the bottom lane against a Kogmile. Yeah, and like he was saying, once he gets his ult, or a when, once he gets his ult and damage items, he's gonna opt to go for those groupings and uh, team fights. And right now, Tenno is just playing a little bit safe because in this matchup, particular matchup. Akwasi Panalo is definitely going to win a lot of these trades, especially since Janna is also a particularly weak support in terms of the laning phase. Even though it is main pick, it's the lineup that doesn't match up. The matchup in the bot lane is not suitable for both Tenno and Mikos, so they will have to play safely, wait for the right opportunity, ganks and responses. They have to wait it out if they want to go all in. And Skirtle's actually... Uh Already at the bot side, taking his red, so the rotation might be soon going into the bot lane where he's gonna uh, be meeting this duo lane and maybe get a kill, but it's a little bit extended, so I'm not sure if he will decide to rotate there. In the bottom lane, nothing much is happening, but Tenno and Mikos is trying to establish their dominance, trying to freeze the lane. We wanna play it a farm style game, and I don't think Radius Arcus feels comfortable with them doing that, harassing them and trying to zone them out even more. And it's still an even laning match on nearly all lanes. This mid lane is gonna be, usually just gonna be a farm fest until level 6. And I think uh, it is when uh, both teams get to level 6 and wherein they can push really their advantages. Because Zen reaches level 6, he's gonna have ganking pressure. So in order to minimize that, I think Virtus Arcus once they get to level 6, also has to group because Kalista is going to have that huge grouping power with her ultimate. Like what the interview said, Panalo is so confident with his Kalista. It's his comfort pick and picking that for the fourth game is a really smart choice. And Scuttle, uh, Skirtle sorry, is trying to gank the bottom lane like a blind spot and he comes into the bottom lane sneaking in that cast and a teleport response. Really good response from Fiery Warrior trying to pick out Tenno but it does not happen. But wow, that was a great response. While in the top lane, Henrol Articuno is suffering too much damage from Poopy, but an orange heals him up and he won't be getting the kill. Yeah, so uh, a teleport wasted there because they didn't, they weren't able to land the kill uh, in that exchange and it, it, it's gonna hold them back a little bit uh, in this game. I mean, Azir tried to respond to that with the teleport, but I guess Wasted teleport is a really bad thing. And now it's sending a message to Azure Eagles that Azir has no teleport. So they can do anything they want while feeling comfortable that Azir won't be there to respond. And in the top lane, Gangplank is really farming it out with his cast and parley. And double Teles in the side of various artists. That's yeah, pretty smart. It's actually something that we've been seeing come out more. Uh, uh, especially coming into worlds where a lot of mid laners already prioritize this teleport instead of the ignite, instead of the exhaust or barrier because it gives them such huge amounts of uh, opportunities to make plays all across the map instead of just focusing it on their lane. So this is actually one of the first times we've seen it in this uh, sets of matches. So let's see how they're gonna be able to play around this. So with teleports in mind, they want to go for a really global total control, what you said, Takno. So to them, I think map control, objectives, and response give, give more opportunities. It's much better than early kill. 
like an ignite or an exhaust and in top lane clearing out wards trying to establish dominance just playing it really cool just you know just just in the uh, start of this game we can already see uh, ako si Panalo getting a slight CS advantage of 10 CS right now uh, with them trying to freeze this lane so much. Look how much pressure Skirtle and the other uh, other members of British Arcus are exerting. They're trying to freeze the wave so it forces Tenno to farm inside this zone of threat where Skirtle can try to get his ganks off. Skirtle is not making Tenno feel good about himself. He's trying, he's showing that Ten, he's sending a message to Tenno that he's not safe. And Skirtle might pay the price by burning his flash over the wall. A really good save. And a teleport has been wasted again for Virgil's Arcus. Fire Warrior in the river, trying to make most of the trade and harassing King of Maltus. Yeah, the advantage is, however, on uh, AZE's side. If you look at the junglers, uh, Skirtle's only level 4, while Zen is level 6. This Two level gold gap, uh, I mean, level gap is really massive, especially since Zen gets his ultimate uh, at level six, which is one of the reasons why you pick Nocturne in the first place. So let's see if he can use this huge level advantage to his priority. I mean, when things go really dark in the map, when it goes black, you really can't go back into your turret because you don't know where to go. So with Nocturne's presence all over the gl over all over the map, I guess. Virtus Arcus has to play safer because wards won't really save them from ganks from a Nocturne. Yeah, definitely. And uh, I'm surprised he actually didn't opt to try to gank bot, especially since uh, they were pushed up. Uh, the bot lane did back just now, but he, he might have been able to try something cheeky uh, during that point. So with Kalista fresh off from the base, is going for that Bork rush instead of a uh, runen's hurricane so i think Callista's main I first item would be a blade of the Rune king and kogmao is going for that phage build up with that long sword and ruby crystal nice home back they had the money they spent it so i think the level of tenos against Pan panalos Callista will be a bit more even thanks to the itemization while gamma just got a phage yeah and another reason why uh, Callista specifically, also Kog'Maw in some sense, has been gaining popularity is because their item builds aren't so bulky. They, they cost less uh, per item slot. And unlike the... Oh, but that has to oh, wait. Hold that thought, Tactum. And Skirtle, nice gang from the backside, but now everything is going chaos. There is a pause. Top lane, there's a fight going on. And also in the mid lane, a fight is going on. I don't know what happened, but... I think King of Motors might go down from this one because he's blinking red while also top lane Henry Articuno is blinking red. So there's been some disconnection and they just reconnected. So we will see the game resume shortly. Let do you think King of Motors will survive or will Henry Articuno will survive? What do you think? I think both of them are gonna die here. <laughs> Although if there was a probability of one of them living, I think Motus has a higher chance because he was able to get some distance away from the other two, uh, the other two uh, laners. And in this scenario, General Articuno is already inside a lot of this damage, and he's probably just gonna die. And the first blood goes to Zen, and like what you said, Takno Zen, uh, King of Motus makes it out alive with more distance, and thanks to Mikos there. Yeah, so it's like almost a 1k gold lead coming from AZE. They're really playing a lot better than their first two games. They're showing they're, that they can exert these pressure when they need to and they can uh, pr uh, have reserved playstyles and protect their carries when they can. And uh, 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 Ateneo is still suffering though from similar disadvantages like their vision. Uh, here in the river you see that uh, LaSalle was able to get this dragon easily because they didn't have vision over it. And with vision is power, and, and with that vision, they were able to get the dragon. And taking advantage of that... Oh, Skirtle! Tried to do a surprise gank, pays the price, but Tenno was uh, burned his flash, so I guess that was pretty good. He burned his flash, so I guess Tenno has to play a bit more safe, knowing that his flash is down. Yeah, Tenno reacted really well there. If that uh, explosive cast were to knock him, into the lane, it would be really hard for him to survive that. That was a risky gank, but I think it paid off in the sense of summoners being spent. 
definitely. And uh, right now, Zen is moving to the mid lane. He doesn't have his ult, so he probably won't be able to gank this lane. There is a ward, so I think Fiery Warriors spotted Nocturne, knowing that he's there. And we might see a skirmish in the river, but Fire Warrior, smart choice, does not commit to that fight. And Zen is just right behind Motus in case a fight breaks out. Yeah, and surprisingly, Tenno was able to catch up in this TS. Unlike we were talking about earlier, wherein we thought that he would constantly be, be punished by Callista in this regard. But it seems like he was able to get out of that 10 CS deficit that he had earlier and even, even it out. So it's going to be a lot harder for... LaSalle to be able to catch up if they do scale into this late game. Zen might gank the top lane. When he does with his ultimate paranoia, Henry Loon Articuno burns his flash and with his cannon barrage on the third area. But looks like he will be taking that. No, yo! Sorry. Zen takes the kill on Articuno. Yeah, he was almost able to dodge that Q from Nocturne. And if, if he was able to do that, he would have probably lived. And another fight in the mid lane. Fire Warrior will be taken down by King of Motos. Skirtle trying to rescue this trade. But I think this might be a bad trade for Veritas Arcus because Skirtle could not make it up with Mikos responding really well. Definitely. And it seems like King of Motos have been so huge on this Lulu, performing really well on both the first game and this game. The score is now 0 3 in favor of uh, Ateneo with around uh, more than 2k gold lead right now. And even though it seems like uh, 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 LaSalle has a stronger early game comp, they are losing this early game, which is going to be uh, quite worrying later on into this game. All hope is on Panala to carry this game with his Callista. While Gragas just offers utility and ganks early, but right now, Azure Eagles is now pressuring the bottom lane. Nice monsoon by Mikos, separating the support from the ADC. Teleport coming in from both top lanes. Poopy is already there, but Fire Warrior. Oh, sorry, in the mid lane, there was a TP, and that was a great Emperor's device, splitting them and giving them less room to move. But to no avail, Tenno still picked up the kill from Fire, Fire Warrior. Fire Warrior tried to do a fancy. Azir shuffle there, trying to push him into the tower turret, but it wasn't nearly enough. So let's see a replay of that uh, uh, in a second. So here we see that uh, they were, he was able to get uh, the Azir ult, but it was nearly not enough. And Tenno was able to have a lot of free hits onto him, which just uh, allowed them to win that exchange. Fire Warrior was really in a bad spot. He divided it, but it was a bad spot. Skirtle comes in for the gang, trying to make the scraps, and a nice cannon barrage from the top lane. Panalo gets a kill on Tenno, and is this a double kill? It is a double kill for Panalo! That will help him give him more gold. Tristam played that really oh, well, but that has Hold up, stop, put another paranoia glance on Panalo. Zen shuts him down. He's on a killing streak. But now, Zen is just dominating nice cast. He burns his flash to get away from the turret. And he's gonna keep going for a double kill. But, oh, that's a really bold move by King of Motors. And it pays off. No! It does not pay off because Fiery Warrior picked up the kill. That was really ballsy from both sides. Azir got there just in time. I think if Motus uh, 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 maybe flashed over the wall instead of uh, through that choke point, he might have gotten away. But either way, it was really good on both sides managing to make the plays. Here's a replay. I mean, you see what Azure Eagle saw. Knowing that ults are down, opportunities are there, Motus casting the giant growth to give Zen more sustained fights and helping him pick up a double kill in the bottom lane while Tristam uh, gives the kill to Motus. Motus was very overextended. He thought that he survived, but nice response from Fiery Warrior. So again, if he flashed over the wall instead of through that choke point, he might have actually lived. But in, in the end, it does. Uh, they do end up trading kills. It's now 3 to 7. 3 to 7. 15 minutes oh. almost into the game and... That's going to be a comeback for Veritas Arcus because the gold difference is not that big. And Callista finished for Blade of the Ruined King. Uh, the item he was aiming for with that double kill, more gold. Yeah, so it's around the 2k gold lead right now. And if you look at the individual uh, gold differences, right now a lot of this gold difference is coming from... Oh, nice Emperor's Divide from Fiery Warrior giving King of Motus a surprise attack. Skirtle, however, gets the kill, securing it. 
Yeah, so another another kill going to LaSalle, but oh my lord, Zen is not stopping from top lane to mid lane to bottom lane. He is not stopping. He is trying to pressure all lanes and shutting them down, not giving the opportunity to have the advantage over the other person. Zen has been a monster in this Nocturne. He's exerting so much pressure in all the lanes and he's really becoming a carry for their team. He's now 5-0-2, around almost 90% kill participation right now. AZ is trying to get the, the dragon right now and there is vision and but they will be able to secure this dragon without confession. Even with the vision of Beridus Arcus, they couldn't do anything about it because the jungler just respond uh, just it's in the base. Azir is very far away. So with that in mind, they took the opportunity to get the dragon. So it's an equal dragon, but the score is 4 to 8, 16 minutes and 30 seconds in the game in favor of, I think, Azir Eagles, right? Because Zen is really such a ganker. I mean, every lane he is there at the right time. When ults are down, they have to be afraid that Zen is around the map, yeah. pressuring all lanes. Zen is really a monster in this Nocturne. He participated in nearly all of their team kills. And just the Nocturne alone at the start, he was two levels ahead of his uh, of Skirtle. And that's why he was able to exert so much pressure uh, later on because he was able to reach that level six first. And this is interesting because both of them actually are PGS players. Skirtle is Rubenga who plays for IPT and Zen used to play for uh, for Naga Esports. And even now, he... Wait, but that has to wait because there is going to be a clash in bot lane. The ultimate of Panalo missed and Panalo is very vulnerable to Zen. He is on the target with Panalo and now he's in a safe zone to free hit. A teleport comes in, Fiery Warrior to the rescue, Emperor's Divide. Nice push by Fiery Warrior. But that just was disadvantage because Kongma was able to get a double kill thanks to Fire Warrior. But he also picks up a double kill. A trade is two to three in favor of Viridus Arcus. Nice response from the mid lane. Viridus Arcus is slowly minimizing this gold lead now. It's all it's almost equal. Six hundred is the lead. And oh, King of Motors! Why did you overstay? What is he doing with that red bird? He might just go down. No, he dodges a nice dodge by King of Motors. But the shield, wow, that last minute shield saved his life, blinking yeah. red. He actually still has his ult up, so there wasn't really not that much a threat right there. Although if they did pop the ult, they might have been able to group later on and force another fight. I think Motus was trying to bait it out. <laughs> Knowing that he has his ult, he wanted them to all jump on him and bait with his ult, but I guess that didn't happen. Smart move by Veritas Arcus for not really being too aggressive. Oh, Gangplak finishing up the Trinity Force and Kogma picked up the core item very uh, like few minutes ago. The Trinity Force, nice item. And another gank in the mid lane. Panalo, you are not safe anywhere. Zen is just picked up the kill again. 6 1. He is rolling in money with that. Is that a, is that a Devour or a Warrior Enhancement? It's actually a Warrior Enchantment. Uh, he really prioritizing the early game. He doesn't want to delay his items by getting a devourer mm, nice nice move by zen nice adaptation and itemization i think azure eagles is really making a comeback with their team comp and how they play how they respond to each fight and how they smartly cooperate and how they want to go to it and tenno wow dealing tons of damage but he gets taken down by Skirtle. He's on a killing spree, but Poopy secures the kill on Articuno. And this is an ugly fight. Milkos has Milk Mikos is surviving, but Zen is doing too much damage. Tristam flashes away, but King of Motors flashes in return, picking up the kill on Tristam. And a double kill to Fire Warrior. Insane free hit and range for Fire Warrior. He's blinking red. And if he commits to that fight again, he might get a double kill. Panalo is in the zone, he's trying to pick up the scraps, but they're not there anymore. Uh, Fiery Warrior played that really well. I actually thought he was gonna fall there, but mm. he was able to use his ult and a few more autos to be able to get that kill. A really close call there, King of Motors almost got the kill with a cheeky glitter lance from the minion. So, uh, but, he, but Fiery Warrior does make it out alive. That was really cheeky, and if Fiery Warrior died from that, King of Motors will have a huge gold lead over him. I mean, 5-3 to 3-2, but 
in terms of CS, I think Azir has the advantage. Itemization-wise, Azir picked up a defensive Zonia's item in case things go really bumpy. And Hecarim and Trinity Force might go for an Omen next item, while Nocturne also got an Omen. So wow. Zen will be setting and initiating every clash they going to fight and Fire Warrior trying to push out the mid lane. Zen has half of all their kills. He's an absolute monster right now. He's able to make a lot of these picks uh, uh, in the mid lane. But now it seems like LaSalle is actually trying to group right now with the Kog'Maw though uh, trying to counter push the bot lane. They might just uh, end up trading it. Talisa is in the bot lane and they might actually collapse here. In the mid lane there will be a collapse. Mikos plants that get, uh, knock up Tornado but misses. And now, LaSalle has three turrets compared to Atenea, which only have zero. Azure Eagles losing in the turret trade and... Oh, Skirtle comes from behind. And nice cast by Skirtle, really knocking up Fupi and Motus in a bad spot. Cannon Barrage hitting Fupi and slowing him down. He, he had to SS out of it. He had to stampy out of the zone in, to save his life. Fire Warrior, brave move and Zonia's combo, but he will be going down to King of Motors. Shotgun goes, goes to him. They dove the turret and they're paying the price. Zen, Dangrove on it and that was, and Tower is right there. And Panalo is free hitting everything. And Fupi is under the turret. Articuno in blinking red. Two members of the team blinking red and three members are down. They have to pull out of this fight. Because it's a losing fight. Atenea has too much damage. Fupi, Tenno, and same with Zen. They're just too painful. And wow, they're just chasing them till the ends of the earth until the mid lane turret. That was a really bad play from Fiery Warrior. He actually tried to push everyone back out, but it ended up failing at the end because he just managed to misposition them a little bit. The tower damage ended up bait, uh, making their uh, teammates take too much at that at the end and they ended up losing that one. They could have easily instead tried to siege that tower. So a uh, really bad play there when they could have gotten a free objective. And nice. now Atenea is getting the dragon. Atenea, nice rotation, getting the second dragon of the game. Skirtle couldn't steal that and I think he was hoping for a steal. Ults are out for Gangplank. I mean, it's anyone's game right now. He already used his SS in a fight so he couldn't do anything to the dragon. Yeah, it's a completely different game right now than what we saw at the earlier stages. Ateneo managing to get around 3k gold a lead once again, even though a while ago it was equal, sort of equalized. The game's going back and forth. Really close game from both sides. It's anyone's game right now. 23 minutes and just the score is 11 and 16. And Zen is really playing the assassin role like game one. And now Mikos is cut off guard. He will have to burn his flash to get away from that onslaught. Nice flash by Mikos to avoid the kill, giving the kill to any of the members of Viridis Arcus. It's gonna be a four-man siege in the mid lane. They're trying to zone them out of the barrel. Ateneo wasn't in position, but now they are. They can try to go for the engage right now if they wanted to. This is a bad engage for Viridis Arcus. They're in the tight spot and the Emperor's Divide splitting their approach, trying to slow them down. Fupi gets stunned by the Frostbite and Tristan gets the kill on that and they're not stopping there. An ultimate on Panalo. He's there not stopping there and whoa. They're not, they're going all in with the cast pushing Tenno away but he gets the kill on Tristan. And this is a bad ultimate by Skirtle. Giving Tenno a double kill. I didn't know what he was thinking by throwing his cast. Oh, giving Tenno more room ball. and he is not stopping there. But nice powder kick to slow down Tenno's approach. If if the artillery shot hits any of them, Tenno might pick up a kill. That was amazing. We have to watch this replay to just see what happened here. So here we can see that Atenea tried to collapse Fupi, goes for the ult, also Zen, but everyone was pushed back. Uh, but uh, And then it doesn't stop Zen, and everyone ends up getting cleaned actually. But at the right moment, at this exact moment, Tenno was able to get the Zeke's Harbinger stack and every auto just ends up doing so much damage that he was able to clean that fight. It was a really good attempt from, uh, from LaSalle in that situation because that ult stopped everyone except Zen. He was isolated but in the end, everyone was able to caught up and when Tenno got that Harbinger, he was able to turn that fight single-handedly. Wow, I think Verita should have just backed away from that. Getting two kills was enough. They didn't stop there. And did you see Panalo throwing Tristan to the enemy Kongma? Like it's a gift. 
So I think Virtus Arcus made some bad judgments, and Azure Eagles, great job seizing the opportunity with the Ziggs Harbinger stack. Great damage from Tano. Definitely, and now it seems like Virtus Arcus is in the mid lane again, trying to push out the wave and maybe try to have some deep wards in that. Now they're actually seeming like they have a siege, but a pause does come up. Another pause for the game, and in terms of itemization, Braum just picked up an omen with a side stone, while Janna is really support oriented with that Ziggs Harbinger. Didn't finish that ascens ascension yet. Kogma picking up a Bork and a Trinity Force, a good item on Kogma. While Kalista, Bork and Runan's Hurricane is a good item for the Kalista player. Any Kalista player should pick up that item to really deal a lot of damage and rend. AoE Ren, that's a really useful skill. Yeah, Mikos has really been changing up his playstyle. In the first few games, we saw him do his really notable roaming support. Uh, roaming support, he used to do those roams and try to get the kills. But when it wasn't working out, he tried to adapt to this playstyle, which really won them the next two games. I mean, this is game four. Virtus Arcus and Azure Eagles, they're not even, I'm not sure if it's an even matchup because Azure Eagles is responding better than Virtus Arcus. So I wonder what happened in the game one and two where Virtus Arcus showed complete domination and looks like Azure Eagles is shaping up their game and bringing the pain to Azure, uh, to Virtus Arcus. Yeah, so if you look at the goal, the, the actually uh, Zen has majority of the gold lead of Ateneo. He has 10,000 as opposed to uh, 8,000 from Graga, so he's holding a 2,000 gold lead as opposed to his enemy jungler. The other laners are in favor of Virtus Arcus. Gangplank has a small lead, and also the mid lane has a small lead. But the fact that Zen has a, such a massive lead individually is really impacting the, this whole game and is shaping it in a different way. In the late game, when it comes, I think Virtus Arcus has to shape up because when, the late, when it comes, they have to be ready. They have to be ready with their spike. Gangblack, Azir, Kalista are mostly late game carries. While in for Ateneo's side, Azure Eagles, Zen, such a cutie as a Nocturne. Nocturne kind of falls off in the late game when they pick up defensive items. If they pick up defensive items, Nocturne's damage will greatly fall off. Plus, Hecarim Fu has Fupi and Kongmao. Great sieging capability and long range harassment from Tenno. But when the late game comes, they can really negate all those damage. Yeah, definitely. And um, but another thing to note is that AZE does have this Lulu pickup. So even in the late game, usually Nocturne's problem is that even if he has a lot of damage items, he goes in and he gets popped instantly. But in this Lulu pickup, if Tenno is positioned well enough and Nocturne goes in into a late game fight and he does get ulted, the CC from that wild growth and maybe Fupi's ult. If they do rely on this Wombo combo, they will be able to close out the game in the late game. If they, uh, but then again, they would be they would be relying on a lot of this uh, combinations of ultimate. So in the late game, I do agree that in some ways, Virtus Arcus is slightly stronger uh, holistically. But in a way, I think uh, you can't necessarily discount the composition of AZE because they still do have that Kong Mao and they still do have that Lulu. So. They have to respect damages from Viridus Arcus and Azure Eagles. And Lulu, great matchup for the Nocturne. When Zen goes in, he needs more sustain. So when the giant growth gets popped, he can turn the fight around. Yeah, definitely. And uh, right now, actually, uh, Azir put his tower in the mid lane. Yeah. So um, it, it's basically saying that they want to seizure, they want to clash. But I'm not exactly sure if they want this clash right now especially since the gold lead is on the favor of aze they probably might want to bait them out of uh this stroke point and maybe get a clash somewhere else nocturne is a huge threat they have to take it out and when the siege comes in i think yeah what you said azir putting up the turret means something they'll be staying in the mid lane turret trying to push out the enemies mid lane turret, which is azure eagles because Virtus Arcus set that turret for a reason, and a reason only. Because when a fight breaks out, they have a safeguard, Azir's turret. If Nocturne goes all in, they can be safe because they know a turret is on their side, very near the tur turret of Azir Eagles. 
Yeah, definitely. They can uh, use this tower as a sort of zoning tool in order to rotate maybe if Ateneo has poor positioning. So they have to be worried about that turret. And Fire Warrior in the middle lane trying to defend his turret. And looks like Henry Odikuno as a gamble can give so much space. And what's this? A brave Baron attempt? Will they be able to pull it off? Or will it screw up and give Azure Eagles more chance? Tristan took too much damage from that Baron. And I'm not sure if that was pretty smart for them. They were actually, I think, trying to use that Azir tower as bait that, <laughs> hey, we're sieging <laughs> mean, mid lane, uh, divert the attention to us. And then when Callista and Gragas go to the, to the Baron pit, they might be able to get it. Uh, so kinky of them. I like how they play, but it failed. So they were trying to trick it out, like what you said, Taxium, but it failed. Zen in the top lane, trying to push out the top lane's outer turrets of Veridus Verid Arcus. But wow, they're not resting at all. They're really focusing on the mid lane, trying to push it out. They want to play as objective wise, because I think they noticed that th they can't play it in a clash. Because when a clash happens, they always lose their clash. And uh, Gangplank, Azir, has their teleports up so they can respond just in time. When something gets ugly, or if they contest for Baron, it can happen. At any given moment, they'll be dead. I think the reason why they were sticking up in the mid lane is because they saw Zen pushing top lane uh, a while ago. So they thought they might have an opportunity to have a surprise 4v5 attempt. However, they didn't really want to risk it, especially since Zen went into a bush during that top lane. So they weren't sure if he backed or not. So uh, LaSalle just trying to keep their uh, keep their gold differential into a minimum. Viridus Arcus. So if you look at the minimap right now, you can yeah. see the vision of Viridus Arcus. It's uh, really <laughs> low right now actually, but they're trying to clear a few wards in the Dragon Pit. Maybe have a favorable position when they have a clash. So with clearing that Baron Pit and Foopy, bad spot to enter. And wow, what's happening with Zen? He's being the main focus and wow, Tristan. Great Unbreakable blocking most of the damage, but he gets taken down by Panalo. Woo, that's such a cleanup. That was a really great Unbreakable. I didn't see that coming. Blocked so much damage, so much CC, and Zen's effort was really wasted. Burning so much of his skills, and look at his mana, almost to nothing. And looks like they have to give this mid lane inhibitor turret because... Nope, nope, they're not gonna commit to that. I thought they wanna go for that, but Fupi being down, they will go to the Dragon Pit. Free Dragons for them. It's not enough for them to push this because Poopy is up in 13 seconds and they're only one man down. Especially since Braum was also low and was forced to back. They couldn't really get this mid lane tower. And now they're rotating into the Dragon Pit. This could be a little bit risky. Poopy has his teleport up and Nocturne is there with his ultimate up. And they could collapse here. It's oh, really risky. It's, but it paid off. They got the Dragon. But that's not gonna help it. I can't see. It's too dark. And Zen is really focusing on Fiery Warrior. Skrull gets taken down by Zen, and Kog'Maw gets a double kill. Tristam, bye-bye. Zen is now chasing Arctic Kuno. Mikos is very low. Really great peel for Tenno, and a double kill. And the ace of the game. They're going for the Baron. Hallelujah. That was a really, really bad call coming from them. And we might see a replay of this. They are just getting the Baron. So, uh, let's see what happened. Everything was in the dark when it happened. They don't know what's going on. That was a great ultimate by Zen. Blocking their vision and they're just cleaning up. Tenno is free hitting without a care in the world. And Arctic Kuno was just going to die from that. Trying to get away. But no, he dies from the not Zen. Yeah, they could have gotten that dragon earlier. I think they were playing uh, They were playing their rotations a little bit too late. And now they paid for it with 5 kills and the kill. They should have just backed away from that. I don't know why they were staying on it. Yeah, and right now, it seems like they're giving such a lead to Ateneo. Now the lead is around uh, 8k gold lead coming from Ateneo's AZE. And it seems it's gonna get really hard for LaSalle to get back into this game. They got the Baron. Azuri Eagles got the Baron while Virtus Arcus got the Dragon. So in terms of favor, I think Virtus Arcus is a bit behind. They have to play it a bit more safe because they can't afford to lose this. If they do, it's going to be an even game and they have to move on to game five. And I'm not sure if the players are ready for that because they have to really show that they're going to win this. And they're not resting yet because Virtus Arcus 
really behind right now in terms of kill and score. Yeah, and right now, it seems like Ateneo is grouping into the mid, mid lane. Uh, that Zeke Harbinger is really doing so much work in the past few clashes. And, it, and right now, if they manage to get a clash, the Baron buff and the gold differential is just going to be too much. This is a tight spot for Veritas Arcus. The landscape is not good enough for them because when it happens, Fupi can just dive in and let's say Zen goes in from the back, focusing on the enemy ADC, who is Panalo. And this might this will be a siege in the bottom lane. They're not gonna give it. And it seems like they're trying to siege on the mid lane. Tenno Whoa. doing huge amounts of damage. Tenno is unstoppable with so much damage. Now they're going all in. Nice Emperor's Divide. Really great job by Fiery Warrior. Fupi will be taking that. And wow, unbreakable. Kudos to you, Tristan. Really defending your team and protecting them. Wow, that was such a great unbreakable. Plus Emperor's Divide. Tenno is taking lots of turret hits. He is tanking the turret. But unfortunately, Articuno got annihilated there. Wow, the screen burst. This is the, why you respect the late game Cog now. He's doing so much damage. Uh, Articuno wasn't even so far in that flash, that, but he, the sheer range just killed him. They're focused on the inhibitor and they do get a Tano. Wow, so much damage. Plus, the Baron buff is really helping as your Eagles push the bottling oh. turret. Cannon Barrage is landing on two people to slow it down, but that's going to be risky for Raiders Arc because they have to pull out. They have to respect Kogmao! Respect Kogmao or you will die! Tano is now left alone with four, five people in the bot lane, all full, and they're trying to take him down. They're not respecting Tano! He's fired warrior gets taken down by King of Motors. The Ignite finishes him off. Stress down very low. Skirtle also low. They're gonna go back in with the Talisman of Ascension. What are they doing that pulling out? Kogmao is such a huge threat right now. That was basically a 3v5 right there. They were able to get all the kills. And Man. that's huge outplay coming from Tenno right now. Tenno's being empowered by Whimsy. He's being empowered by the Zeke's Harbinger and he's being empowered by all the buffs of his teammate right now. He's such a huge threat. And not enough respect for Azure Eagles. They're so disrespectful. I think <laughs> the Elder should teach them manners. Tenno is so much damage. They don't even realize that they're so low. They're still gonna keep going in without a care in the world. This time Azure Eagles is showing that they have the teamwork, the peel. Well, wow, Virtus Argus is now suffering. Maybe they shouldn't have trolled that last game. They should have went full all in, securing the win. But now it looks like they're paying the price by being a bit too comfortable. Yeah, and just like the interview a while ago, you really should take the word of Tenno and not underestimate his late game champions. Right now, we saw in the early game, he was having a hard time in the laning phase, but he's completely coming through right now with all the buffs in the world from all of his teammates supporting this massive late game Kog'Maw. And it seems like uh, Viridus Arcus has no tools to deal with it. It's so dark in the map and General Articuno will be taken down. Nice teleport from Fupi, securing the kill on Articuno. Skirtle is next on the chopping board. He goes to the Braum and Braum, wow, great front line blocking the damage. But will Panalo be taken down by Zen? Zen gets stunned by the Frostbite. Wow, wow, bravo to that. Nice place of future to divide. Oh. And first to fight. Great job, Fire Warrior. Take it home. Take it home. Zen, go down. Peace. Go down. Get stunned. Yes, he goes down. Wow, triple kill. Triple kill for. <laughs> oh my god, triple kill for Fear in the Circus. That was a huge play coming from Azir, and e uh, but even though that huge play managed to pull through, uh, Ateneo is still able to win that clash. Azir was able to push four people into tower range, but yet they were still able to win. Banalo, do something! To defend your third base! This is game four grand finals, you cannot lose here! Cannon Barrage to assist Banalo and to, to kill Fupi, but... Please go down, Fupi. Your horse, go down! Yes, he goes down to Articuno. Great assist from the game plan. Such huge power plays coming from both sides. That was an amazing, that was amazing Azir play, even if they lost that clash. And let's look at the replay just to see what exactly happened there. I don't care if they lost the clash, but that was a great Empress Divide from Fiery Warrior. We'll see a replay so here. So they managed to pick off one of their members. Skirtle in trouble. He does flash away. And it's, it seems like they're doing a lot of damage. They get stunned. And at the side, Azir walks in flashes behind all the members and walls them into the tower. That was an amazing play. Even if they lost that clash, 
that that surely almost tipped the scales even though they were really low and there's another clash going on in the game right now actually we have to look at it they try everyone what? into the dragon pit what 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 just happened i just saw azure eagles completely eat up various archers i mean Wow, what just happened there? I mean, I hope we see the replay, but wow. They, I think various Arcus got the dragon for that. They got the dragon because I think Gragas secured the dragon, but I'm not sure. Yes, Gragas took the dragon, but was that a good trade for them? Four members of the team are left down, and I think Azure Eagle got this one it's in the bag. It's 15 seconds still, and they still have... Stop, come on, boy. Show us what she can do. Nice creature feature, knocking out two enemy people. An ace for Azuri Ingus. Zen is not going down. He is immortal and looks like. Oh going to game five. This might be a reverse sweep coming. This is from a reverse sweep. We'll be going to game five. Azur Eagles, great comeback. So, oh my god, we're live on stream. <laughs> Sorry about that. The game was so exciting, right guys? I mean, wow, great skills from Azur. I mean, Verinus Arcus' Fire Warrior and Azur Eagles made a really good comeback from that. That was an amazing play from being 2-0 at the start of this series. series. Now it's 2-2 with Ateneo winning the next, the two, last two games. And if they win the next game, it's gonna be a reverse sweep from Ateneo's side. And it's still open for anyone to take this game. Ah, they should have played it right in the third game. I don't know what happened there. So wow, looks like Azuri Eagles versus Redis Argus. Game 5, best of out of 5. We'll be really going into 5 games. So we're just gonna take a small 3 minute break and we'll be back right after the break for Game 5 to see who takes on the grand, uh, the grand prize of 20,000 pesos with the first runner up getting the 10,000 peso prize. Oh, guys, tune in and we'll be back in after 3 minutes. So we'll see you then.